The boys and I have caught up on nearly all of our projects around the house and we're starting to go stir crazy. We're trying to be responsible and not go out to stores during the quarantine, so we've run out of building materials, but we have no shortage on boxes. So stick around to see how we turn this into this with SolidWorks sheet metal. Not everyone can envision finished sheet metal products in their head, myself included. Edge flanges, angles, will this thing flatten? Where do I start? Yuck. But what nearly anyone can do with ease is make blocky shapes that represent the outside of an enclosure. I'll need to start with a reference model, and as fun as modeling up the kiddo sounds, I'm going to save some time and head to my SolidWorks to see if there's a good CAD model I can use as a reference. A check of the geometry confirms it's clean data ready to use. Building cardboard costumes is a straightforward process. Step one is good reference data. Now I'm going to build my in-context parts relative to this imported model. Creating parts relative to other parts in SolidWorks is simple. Inserting a new part into the assembly builds a virtual part in the assembly with access to all the top level reference geometry. In fact, when editing a part in an assembly, the default is that you want to make references to other parts. But that can always be turned off to ensure I don't add undesired design intent. Now I can make my fun creative blocky coverings with various extrudes, cuts, chamfers, drafts, or lofts. My only creative constraint is to make sure that I have flat faces. As long as I select a face and have the option to create a sketch on it, I should be good to go for sheet metal. Step two in our process, make fun blocks. With my blocky covering complete, I can convert this into sheet metal just like any enclosure design. Cardboard behaves a bit like sheet metal because it has a uniform thickness, has bends in all the corners, and can be flattened. This is where the all-powerful convert to sheet metal command comes to the rescue. Simply starting with a general blocky solid, we can convert it into sheet metal by selecting a starting face, then proceeding to select the edges we want to fold out. SolidWorks automatically recognizes rip edges and applies corner reliefs without any extra hassle. SolidWorks will even recognize our holes that we put in for our eye and mouth slots. I can apply the material to the inside or outside to cover the costume. If you're not convinced just how easy SolidWorks makes this, I enlisted a special helper to finish out the design. Yep, this is my four-year-old son who was able to pick the edges to make his mask. Step three is to convert our block into sheet metal. Most of this armor I will have no problem making out of a single box. But what about larger shapes? The largest single piece of cardboard for our armor design is the chest plate. And I was trying to use this as the justification for ordering a new big screen TV so we could use that box, but my wife said I was being ridiculous. Anywhere there's large sections where one piece of cardboard won't do, within the convert to sheet metal command, we just select the option keep body. So we can repeat the convert to sheet metal feature for remaining sections. Step four is to use keep body for any larger multi-body sections. With all the design work done, now I need to get a flat pattern printed. Each flattened part needs to be printed at scale so we can cut the pieces out. And the easiest way to do that is saving a DXF for each. During the save to DXF process, I also like to add bend lines as reference for myself. Step five is save DXF flat patterns. At this point, it's time for some hackery. I'm sure there's a way to print correctly to my printer, but the easiest way I found was save as a PDF first, making sure the scale was set to one to one, then doing a poster print of the larger PDF. So step six is get one to one printouts by whatever means you can. With the printouts ready, simply lay out and attach the full flat pattern to your cardboard and cut out the flat pattern. I found scoring the lines with an X-Acto knife or a utility knife to work well. Then using a utility knife or scissors to help finish the cuts. Step seven is cut out the cardboard. Once we have our flat pattern cut out, it's time to get folding. To make clean creases, I found it best to use a straight edge and pinch the cardboard between the table and straight edge 
right where you want the brake to occur. Step eight is pre-bending all the bend lines. All the work is about to come together with this final construction step. Use small pieces of tape to help connect your rip edges. Just work around to form the finished shape. Step nine, tape the insides at your rip edges. Our last step is decoration. And I use duct tape to help because duct tape is amazing and makes everything better. Not only does it add color to the costume, it helps provide rigidity and durability as well. If you don't use duct tape, I suggest adding additional tape to the inside rip edges to secure them in place. So step 10, decorate and play. Wanna make a quick costume? Or better yet, need to make enclosures with sheet metal? Give CATI a call at the number listed below. Because sheet metal in SOLIDWORKS is so easy, even a child can do it. Let's pick that one. Alright. Well, I'm doing the sheet metal. You are doing the sheet metal.